Welcome to module two. So now we're going to be going over general SQL. Uh, so basically this is your intro. We're gonna talk about select statements, joins, where clauses, having clauses, group buys, and order by. So let's just hop right in. Okay, so first we're talking about select statements. So some notes on select statements, select star from a table is going to give you all columns and all rows. If you put a limit at the end of your select statement, that's going to limit the number of rows. So you'll still get all the columns, but in this instance, you'll only get 200 rows returned. And also you can select specific columns that you want to show up in your query. And those columns can be from multiple tables if you're going to do a join. But so here we're just going to practice a couple select statements and, and we'll talk about joins later. So let's go over to our SQL browser and we'll start writing some queries. All right, so first let's get rid of these queries that are in here. So if I want to get an idea of what my data looks like, even though I can see the columns listed over here by doing the drop down on the different tables, it makes sense for me to look at each of the tables individually. So I'd wanna do select star from customer, because that's the customer table, limit 20, because I just want to get an idea. And we can also do this for the other tables as well. You just need to type those in. Okay, and so I can run this selection and I see that there's a ton of columns. I see I have some nulls, I have missing phone numbers. A lot of the data is numeric, but a lot of it is not, right? So for something like state, we'd want to create a Boolean variable that is, you know, in Massachusetts, zeros and ones, or is California, and then that's zeros and ones, because this wouldn't really work as a factor variable. We also see that the zip codes where you're in Canada, are not gonna be formatted like they are in the United States. And if we have zip codes that are supposed to begin with a zero in the United States, because they're typically five digit zip codes, and some are plus four, but you know the main five digit zip code, the zeros got truncated. So we'll need to fix that. But so this is an idea of your table and some of the variables that are in that table. So if we look at the web scraping data, we've got a column for errors. Most of those are null. Um, you'll see that there is an error in the column name error. So that is also something that we could fix if we wanted to take the time to do it. Whether or not that website is published, whether or not it's a service business. So there's lots of data in here. You can take a look whether or not they use Weebly, that is a um, website builder if you're not familiar. So WP stands for WordPress. So those are people, my, my personal site, Data Moves Me, is on WordPress. Uh, uses GA is Google Analytics. And this is the language of the site. Now remember, not all of our customers have websites. So we are obviously only gonna have data in this table for those customers who have websites that we were able to scrape. If we look at the build services data, see we see the currency, how much was paid, the dates when they ordered and when the service was completed, and we have customer ID, right? So that we'll be able to join back to the other tables. And here's our sales call data. So this gives us, again, you know, whether or not the person was actually contacted or whether they said they'd get back to us. And so when we think through how to feature engineer this, 
Um, not all of this data is going to be relevant, but there are ways that we may want to pull it in where it would be relevant for modeling. So some other things that we can do with our select statements, as I said, were to pull in certain columns from the table. So here in the customer table, we know that we have customer ID. That's the first column right here. We have first conversion date. That's right here. And we have country. And so if I wanted to pull just those three columns, I'd list just those three columns. And now that's what I'm going to get back. So if I find that some of the data isn't relevant, it's not what I want to use, then I'm just not going to pull that data. Um, another important one to know is that if I get rid of this limit, right? So I can do select star from customer and run that selection. And it's going to take a while because it's a big table. And it tells me that there's 351,962 rows. Now the question is, is that actually distinct, right? Are there, are there 351,000 rows or do we actually have 351 different distinct customers? So... One thing that I use very frequently is I can count the distinct customer IDs. So I'm going to do count distinct customer ID from the customer table. And so if the results of this query is 351,962, then we know that we have a different row for each customer. And the number is different. So we know that we have some dupes in here that we're going to have to remove. So feel free to pause this video at any time so that you have time to write the queries into your browser. But to make it so that we don't move too slowly, I'm going to copy and paste some of the queries from a document that I set up previously. All right, so now I'm gonna go into a different tab. I'm gonna look at whether or not the columns are distinct in two of the tables. So I'm running the whole thing. So I hit the run button instead of run selection because I didn't highlight it. And we'll see we have this we're able to scroll down and we can see that we already knew that the customer table wasn't distinct. And we also see that the build services table isn't distinct. We can also do other functions other than just count. So we could look at the sum of the Pinterest. So the Pinterest column is one if you have Pinterest and zero or null if you don't have Pinterest. So if I was to sum that up, it would be the count of the number of customers who actually are using or leveraging Pinterest, right? So that'd be sum What's the name of the Pinterest column? Sum has Pinterest from customer. And I can give this an alias. So if I don't give this an alias, then the name of the column is going to show up as sum has Pinterest. But I can give it a name. So as um, we'll call it taught for total Pinterest, okay? And so we can run this selection and there are 6,089 people who have Pinterest in our customer table. And so we know that one, our customer table is not deduped, so this actually may not be distinct. 
people with Pinterest. So we're going to learn some more so that we'll be able to get to that number. But we also know that as a percentage of all the people in the customer table, those 350,000 people, that this is still a relatively small percentage of the people that actually do have Pinterest. So I can do some. I can do some of something that isn't uh, a Boolean variable. And so that'll give me the actual sum of sales or commissions or whatever column it is that I'm doing a sum over. So let's do one of those and just look at it. Um, sum of August commission would make sense. We'll call that taught commission from customer. So we'll run that. And so you see it gave me an error. Um, the total commission is over $22 million. I could also get the max commission. What was the largest commission out of all the commissions in that column? Okay, so that was $10,000. And then another aggregate function that we can do is also the average. But of course, we want to be very careful about using this because a lot of times the data is not going to be distributed in a way where it would make sense for us to use an average, right? The median would be a more reasonable metric here. Okay, so the average commission was $66. And then I don't think that median is an option, but we'll give it a go. Oh, okay, so median is an option. And so, um, typically you're going to prefer that, right? Because that's, you know, the very middle person, they're spending $45 in commission, uh, whereas the average is a little bit higher. So we obviously have some people with a higher commission that is skewing the result a little bit higher than what the true middle person is spending. All right, so that is a overview of some select statements.